like random things like, what does it mean to be cool? <laughs> You know, and I mean, yeah. they're, they're kind of like conversation starters. I haven't really been using them here this weekend. Did you already hit record? Yeah. Yeah, we're, so anyways. I, what does it mean to be cool? That's the question that all numismatists have been asking for generations. It's so funny. All right, I'm Numismatists, gonna start. we wouldn't know, right? That's right, <laughs> numismatists, we, we're the definition of cool. All right, I'm here with Matt from Tudor Coins in Albuquerque, also the president of the Albuquerque Coin Club. Welcome. Thank right? you. Did I get that right? Are you uh, El Presidente? I was for, former vice president. I am the Borscht chair now, YN program director, and I'm on the board of directors. So. But you guys have like layers to that thing. Oh yeah, we've got a full board with 10 members and the whole, whole nine yards. Wow. So one of the things I tell people about the Albuquerque Coin Club is just that the people really make it go, which is like any coin club. Right. So, you know, what's it like just, uh, what's coin club life like in Albuquerque? I mean, how do you guys get so much done? Uh, like you said, there's layers. There's, there's people that are very committed to the club mm -hmm. and they're kind of the core members, the board of directors and the outlying um, officers. And we just, we believe in numismatics uh, as far as a hobby and a way to promote research and development of, mm -hmm. of your, um, what would you say, your, your knowledge of history. Oh, yeah, right, connecting them. Yeah. Connect the story. And then the it, I also feel like it's great for youth to get into because you get a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. that you maybe wouldn't have had without the numismatic hobby and the people that you meet. How's the, how is the youth movement currently in the Albuquerque Club You got and the YN stuff? What type of things are you doing with YNs? And We've got a really good treasure hunt we do at the show to mm -hmm. kind of make our first contact with people that are coming to the show, coming to a show for the first time, you yeah. know, and, and seeing some coins. Um, we do a monthly mini meeting when we do have YN show up. Our meeting runs kind of late on a weeknight, so we don't get as many kids as we would like. Uh, but we do a little mini meeting um, with a auction for the YNs, so they, they get club bucks for coming to a meeting, they get club bucks for any kind of volunteer work they do for their grades, etc. so they can buy things through the auction. And we, we uh, scale a presentation to their level, so if they're older YNs, you know, it's something a little more up their alley and age group. And for newer people, we, you know, break down, say, the terminology of a coin or the history of the buffalo nickel or something like that. So you guys, you say club bucks. You guys actually have physical, we like, should, good we, for token Yeah, like we club strike, bucks, right? strike our own money. This, um, this some members of, of the club own a the press. Uh, they, they bought a... Of course they do. <laughs> of course. They brought a hydraulic press so we can make our own club bucks and commemorative medals. <laughs> What's wrong with medals? your coin club, folks? You don't have your own <laughs> coin press. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. We appreciate We're that. We're throw, throwing down the gauntlet right there. That's funny. So, you know, we, we do a lot for uh, the YNs with, with the club bucks, and I don't know. I feel like we could be doing more, but it's hard to, to steal the it, youth from, it, you know, all the other distractions all the other, that are out there. All the other distractions. That's right. I think... I feel like you're doing a, a big part of that. You know, you have a lot of outreach, and I know a lot yeah. of people come to see you specifically at shows, so. Yeah, no, thank you. I do I do think that being someplace where they're at makes a difference, right? And so, at least I know they're on YouTube. Um, sure. I, I haven't broken TikTok yet, I, <laughs> but Instagram, I'm, I'm not quite as active on, but still, those are places where kids play. I mean, they play in the digital world, on a digital sandbox, and so it's good to be there. And I do think also, though, that the parent the parent-child relationship is really important too. Like I've seen, when I see, like for me, my dad, he didn't care about coins at all, but he would take me, it was probably like three times a year, but it felt like every weekend. You know what I mean? When you're right, a kid. Right, right, right. He would take me to a local shop and we had a couple we would go to once in a while. Sometimes my younger sister would come with me. And so, but like that's like really impactful when you have a parent who will take you even though he, they're not really interested in coins and so when i see at a show like this parents walking around and sometimes i know they're like doing it together mm -hmm. but when it's a parent and i know the parents just like enduring <laughs> like looking around like where am i right now i'm like that's a good parent you know? yeah definitely that's that's great to see I like the opposite side of the coin. A lot of times you'll see an older father or mother taking their, or the older kids, you know, 40, 50 year old kid taking their, their elderly parents around the show. And I think that's really oh. cool to see them, you know, not only as, as youth, but also older in life. You know, they're wanting to do something yeah. together and make those memories again. And I think that's really cool to see both both sides of that. No, that's a good point. I, yeah, there's a, there's a, a lady I see with her dad and she goes to Vegas. We've seen her in Long Beach and, and we saw her here in Baltimore. And I just, I think that's such a cool relationship and something to do, you know, together that you'll never forget. You know, she's obviously yeah. making memories. 
Yeah, we had in and uh, speaking of relationships, it's the same thing with husband and wife. Like the times that I've seen husbands and wives that collect together, it's really a cool dynamic. Like you look and you see kind of what's happening with uh, with the couple when you know he and she are together looking for stuff and collecting together. It's, it's yeah. really a cool. It's really a cool thing to see. I get to see a lot of that in the club, and you're right. It is a cool dynamic. You know. They're kind of splitting their coin budget together when they go to shows and, oh, if yeah. you get this, can I get that? It's yeah. pretty fun to watch. So for club life then, does that mean your next stop is like ANA president? Is that? You know, I'm <laughs> actually stepping back from a lot of that. I'm doing a lot more shows yeah, and uh, I'm, I want to stay involved with our local show yeah. and doing as much as I can with that. But I've, I'm starting to step back from board of directors. It's a lot of work. It is. It's it is. And, you know, as I had the time, I wanted to commit it to the club, and that's something I highly recommend is become a member of your local club. I'm a member of too many clubs. I think yeah. Tucson, yeah. Colorado, you know, Colorado Springs, El Paso, all the outlying clubs. Yeah. It's, it's hard because you just you want to give and give, and then it's like you've realized there's, I only have so much, <laughs> only sure. so much clock space and to, to a lot to think. So. Right. So now, so you've transitioned into what I think all kinds of collectors think they want to do. Right, and be that's to be a dealer, right? I mean, in my mind, I meet so many collectors who, at least I know, come into the coin shop. Regulars, they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, can I work here?" You know, it's like all the time I get the question. And so, so what has the transition been like for you? And describe it for people who think they want to be a dealer. Uh, I feel like I still maybe have a little bit of imposter syndrome. It's <laughs> it's not like you, you sell coins for a couple of years and you're a coin dealer. There's yeah. there's levels to it, you know, as you know. So I feel like um, it's it's eye opening. You know, you gotta. I like your outlook on it, where you still appreciate coins. It's easy to see so many of and handle so many that they lose their luster, so to speak. Um, but I, I like your outlook on it, and I still I'm still a sucker for coins. So I'm not quite a coin dealer yet. <laughs> You know, I let my heart lead me too much. Well, no, it's good though. It's like you need that in dealers. There's a couple of my favorite, oftentimes it seems like there's world dealers or international or ancient dealers that I think are better at not losing their their enthusiasm for the material and still being dealers. Like I, I get what you're saying and I had a customer recently talk about, it's really nice to have a dealer that's not jaded, right? Because totally. it's exactly what you're talking about. You see so much of it that it becomes like, you know, not as fun, mm -hmm. right? And so it's easy to become jaded, but it seems like for some reason, international dealers, I'm thinking of quite a few that I know, man, they just love the material. And because I think it's because it's so diverse. I mean, they've got such a broad field to play in versus like a U.S. guy who's really kind of has a, even though the U.S. market is huge, sure, it's still a small market when you put A to Z with all the countries in the world right. throughout it's all time. Right, it's very finite types, you know, you know. A lot of coins just have different yeah. dates at the bottom. So what what is it that keeps you zesty about it? What do you, I mean, I, I know you collect a lot of oddball stuff, maybe not so expensive, yeah. but interesting. I so think, what keeps you interested in You know, I interviewed uh, uh, Lori Kraft. Uh, I'm combining I'm getting names. So this is what happens when you travel for three days, and all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden you throw the wrong name out there. We'll put that in the notes as to who I meant to say. Anyway, the the, the point is, it's like there's so much about this is about the people. You know, her comment was this industry has such great people in it, and I think that's really a very true thing. And whether you're at the local club and you think of all the people that you actually really enjoy spending time with at your club, owning a shop, it's like customers we have very friendly and loyal customers guys on the show circuit it's really like a family like there's guys that you see all the time and they become like a family it's you true. know so there's that and then the coin for me i get the benefit of i have feedback from collectors that and this is the same thing if you're just a dealer but also just from like the youtube side of things people encourage me by being encouraged just like a a positive loop almost of like you know oh you know thanks I learned something and so you can get the same thing as a dealer when you're at a table and you're helping people out and you know the dad and kid come up kind of thing and you're helping the kid you know you really get that feeling of okay I love this job right like I get to show this kid something I get to teach him it can be the most mundane thing that like the most beginner collector already knows but that kid doesn't know and you get to teach him that I think that's always kind of helped you know, and so you can look at, you can get to the point where I think coins become 
a little bit, they can still be a little bit on the tactile side and, and product side, sure. but you can still enjoy it because you're still enjoying the people. And at the same time, you still get to see stuff that you're like, oh man, I've never seen a coin that looks like that before, or I've never owned one of those before. And you know, and, and if all else fails, you can start collecting paper money and go down that rabbit hole and you know. So I think you do a pretty good balance of shop and, and show life, right? Which do you prefer? I like, um, I like shows because, you know, uh, you're dealing with collectors. Uh, the nice thing about a shop is that, you know, you're not on the road. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna get to the fact that the road life is the thing that's really a lot, probably a lot different. I mean, most people, Dave Ramsey is a saying that if most people who think uh, travel for work is glamorous are people who've never traveled for work. It, it takes a while to get used to, you know. You know. This month, um, I'm home five days this month, so it's... Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, yeah I mean, and part that's of that's hard. by choice. I'm going to summer seminar both weeks. Oh, okay, so, very cool. Have you uh, done summer seminar before? I have, actually, and can I plug A&A? &A? Please. Uh, I, I gotta encourage everyone that's interested in numismatics to check out summer seminar. It is a two-week event, so there's a week one and week two, so the weeks are broken up and you take a class per week, or you can go one week or both, it's up to you. Um, highly recommended. It's very high level education on a specific numismatic topic that you're interested in. For example, grading one or counterfeit detection or ancient Greek coins. I think there's 32 classes total to choose from and there's also many classes in the evenings if you want to bone up on something specific like auction um, insider info. So uh, check out the ANA if you're not a member already. It's money.org. They have interactive displays of everything they have in the museum, access to a fantastic library, um, and I, I highly encourage everyone to take advantage of all the benefits president, in the ANA. The, the future president of the ANA over here. I, I no, that's it. Not only is that a, uh, we've I've plugged, I do plug the ANA in summer seminars, um, and I've never been. I've never been, so I just, I, I need to get down there. There's 32 different courses. You, you can only take one course a week, though? One per week, yeah. So it's yeah. it's like a Monday through Thursday thing, and yeah. you're in class from 8 in the morning until about 4.30 in the afternoon. You oh, okay. You break it's for like, lunch. It's like all day. Yeah, it's pretty intensive. Intense. You're on a college campus. You get to stay in the dorms if you opt for that. You can eat in the cafeteria, which it makes it really convenient. In Colorado Springs? It is. It's yeah. at the College of Colorado in Colorado Springs, and the nice. ANA headquarters is there as well. Well, and, you know, the ongoing learning process is one of the other things that kind of keeps you fresh. Absolutely. You know? And guys who, I think the guys who really get stale are guys who like are only always on the road. And the nice thing about you asking about shop versus road, the nice thing for me is like, I can go back and forth and I do go back and forth. So I'm not constantly just doing one thing. Yeah. And so being able to transition back and forth into different things, I think also kind of helps. Uh, hopefully it helps keep the mind a little bit young, but you know. Uh, that is yet to be determined. So, sure. is this your first time in Baltimore? It is, this is my first yeah. Baltimore show. How um, do you like Baltimore, just as an area? I really enjoy it. It's, it's, um, I'm not used to the water and lushness. We, <laughs> yeah, we, we live in a similar area where it's mostly tumbleweed and cactus. That's right. Uh, so it's really right. cool to get out here and enjoy some of the scenery and you know see the ships in the harbor and that was cool. have a lobster roll. Did you go roll. down to the USS Constellation? I did. We were, they were doing live music there yesterday. Oh my gosh! And uh, they pirate it music? makes you feel pretty patriotic to see Dude, that that ship yeah. was worth the trip. I think absolutely. I, I just loved. I mean, getting to line up behind a bunch of cannons. <laughs> I mean, the reality is that even if you're a U.S. coin collector, you always love pirate ships. You know what I mean? Like you always love that time period, the thought of mm -hmm. shipwrecks and treasure coins. I don't know a coin collector who doesn't think that. That all, concept is cool. Yeah, all wooden ships with the cannons poking out of the portal. I mean, my goodness. I, yeah, I was gold I, doubloons, matey. <laughs> I did get a little worried that it's like, how are we floating right now? They're, you know, because they're 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 fixing on fixing up par parts of it down below and stuff. And I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm just trusting this thing's going to keep floating. So yeah, no, this has been a fun experience for me being out here in Baltimore in the area. I thought it was pretty nice um, in general, just to be able to see some different things you don't get to see if you're from the west. Um, definitely, you know, water, boats, you know, we got to go to an Orioles game last night and that was kind of a cool experience at Camden Yard. So there's yeah. lots to do like in the area, uh, right by the convention center, which, which is nice. Did you have any pickups here that you really that you thought uh, were pretty cool or? 
or did you see something for yourself when you're wandering around thinking, you know oh, I did man. actually get one really cool thing uh -huh. and I and it's because of you oh no I, I, don't, I, I don't watch your, everything I watch me. your stuff pretty religiously um, and you did this video on proof mercury dimes. How uh -oh. recently was that? Dude, cut, stop, cut tape, <laughs> cut tape. So this is a great video. He, he highlights how short the series is and how fun it is to collect. So I'm like, okay, I'll look at those. I have four now. I picked up <laughs> a, a proof 66 with a CAC sticker, a 36. So I'm really okay. happy with that oh, one. Oh dang, yeah, 36 is the tough, yeah. tough, tough. And I, I just, I kept staring at it all weekend and ended up buying it, so. Oh, that's fun. But yeah, that is too cool. Well, there you go. Any other parting words of wisdom before we both catch a red eye back to our respective states? Um, I just want to share a little story with um, with your viewers. Okay. It's a little bit of nerding out on Ben the Coin Geek. Oh, but no. As I was transitioning into being the board chair, which is the person that puts on the show in our area, New Mexico, um, I'm looking through the list of table names and I'm like, you got Ben the Coin Geek. Ben the Coin Geek is coming to our show, so I nerded out a little bit, but it's it's always an honor to have you at the show, man. I love what you do for numismatics. Thank you. And, I appreciate that. And your outlook, you know, you keep it fresh. The way you look at things is very invigorating yeah. for me because it gives me a break from just seeing it as stuff. So oh, yeah, thanks yeah, for yeah. what you do. You keep me from getting bored as a dealer. Oh, so. I, man, that's, thanks, that ben. means a lot. Appreciate it. All right, take care.